Good day. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Douglas Harder, and in this topic, we're going to discuss approximating a point using least squares best fitting polynomials. So in this topic, we will discuss evaluating a least squares best fitting polynomial at a point. We will describe to how to find the coefficients of such a polynomial, and we will see that we can do it actually quite efficiently as long as we are sampling the data periodically. We will be looking at the change in runtime with our more efficient means of finding these coefficients. And we'll see at the very end that we can even reduce the runtime to order one per step. We're also going to observe the differences between using linear and quadratic least squares best fitting polynomials for estimating the value of the signal at the current time and even extrapolating one step into the future. So from the previous discussion, we've seen that we can find the least squares best fitting linear polynomial passing through a given set of noisy data. And this should be a reasonably good approximation. Now here we're moving back into the time domain as we will be implementing solutions we would use in an embedded system to estimate our current position, future positions, etc., based on previous or historical data. Now, one of the major problems with least squares, however, is that finding this polynomial first requires us to calculate the following matrix. Then we solve the corresponding system of two linear equations and two unknowns, which isn't that much work, and that gives us our interpolating linear polynomial. On the other hand, we also saw that if we wanted to find an interpolating cubic, we'd have to calculate all the entries in this particular matrix and the right-hand target vector. And then we'd have to solve this system of three linear equations and three unknowns, and that would give us the best fitting least squares interpolating or least squares quadratic polynomial passing through this data. This is potentially a lot of work, especially if you were to do this with every single cycle. Now, fortunately, however, remember, in an embedded system, we are periodically sampling our sensors, and consequently, the t values are equally spaced in time. Thus, we can use the exact same trick as we've done before, shifting to the origin and scaling. So the most recent datum is at zero. The second most, the most second most recent datum is at negative one, and so on and so forth into history. Consequently, one time step into the future would, in our scaled system, be at t equals one. So now we can calculate the Vandermonde matrix for this simpler system, and this is going to be a matrix that is. In this case, 5 by 2, the first column has entries negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0. The second column has all 1s. We can even find the condition number of this matrix, and it's quite small. So that's quite nice. It's pos That's a good result. If we actually calculate the inverse of A transpose times A, all times a transpose, we actually get a very simple matrix. Because after all, the previous matrix was an entirely integer matrix. And therefore, for example, the inverse is going to be, once we simplify it, it will actually be a matrix of rational numbers, which is actually sort of nice. So here we can see that this matrix is quite simple. Notice also there are two zeros. Let's go to the next slide. Thus, we have that the solution for the two 
coefficients of the interpolating or least squares best fitting line can be found simply by taking linear combinations of the previous y values. More simply, if we multiply it out, we notice that both a1 and a0 are just linear combinations of the y values, and that gives us our least squares best fitting straight line that passes through the data. That's actually quite nice because now we can use this line to estimate values. For example, if the data is very noisy, then the most recent reading may not even be a reasonable approximation of the true value. All right, so how do we estimate our best approximation of the current location? Well, what we can do is evaluate this interpolating polynomial at t equals zero, and that gives us that point there. But if we substitute t equals zero into a1 times t plus a0, that really means the best approximation of the current value is just a0. Nice. One other nice feature about a least squares best fitting line is that we can extrapolate into the future, or we can evaluate that Interp uh, least squares the best fitting line at some value around the most recent time. So for example, if we want to extrapolate one step into the future, estimating what the value of y will be at tn plus one, we can just evaluate the interpolating or the least squares best fitting line at t equals one. Well, that's just a0 plus A1. So that is the point we would find, and therefore the best approximation of what the value of the system one time step into the future will be just A0 plus A1, which we can calculate to be this particular linear combination of Y values. Notice, however, if we've already calculated A0 and A1, we can just add these two known coefficients. More generally, we can also estimate the value at some point Tn plus or minus delta H, which would be found by evaluating this least squares best fitting linear polynomial at T equals delta. So therefore, the best approximation of the value of the function at tn plus delta times h is just a0 plus delta times a1. Now, the example we've shown found a best fitting least squares line passing through five points. Nothing prevents us from using either fewer or more points to find that least squares best fitting line. And what's very nice is that in all cases, we're just going to find the coefficients a0 and a1, and they're simply going to be linear combinations of the most recent y values. So for example, suppose we wanted to find the least squares best fitting line passing through 10 points, that is the most recent reading and the nine previous readings. In this case, the van der Moen matrix can be constructed as follows. We can then calculate the inverse of A transpose times A, all times A transpose. And this is the two by 10 matrix that we would multiply the y vector by. That is, we have just found that both a1 and a0 are linear combinations of the 10 y values. What's very nice here is that having found these coefficients a0 and a1, the estimators for the best value at t sub n 
the best value extrapolating one time step into the future and the best value of the estimating the point at tn plus delta h remain unchanged from the previous two slides. So that's actually really nice. Now note that because the van der Moen matrix we've created is an integer matrix, we can use some of the properties of integer matrices. For example, we can use the fact that the determinant of an integer matrix is itself an integer. So let's create that van der Moen matrix again, and let's calculate the determinant of A transpose times A. However, that's going to give us a floating point number. Let's round it to the nearest integer. We should actually check our answer, but even for matrices of size 10 by 10, the round off error is going to be so small that it should round to the correct integer. So we get that the determinant of A transpose times A is 825. Now, we're not going to calculate the inverse of A transpose times A all times A transpose, but rather we will multiply that by the determinant of A, A transpose, and that should give us actually an integer matrix, which it does. Now to actually calculate the inverse of A transpose times A times A transpose, we divide by the determinant of A transpose times A. And that gives us the matrix we saw on the previous slide. The only difference is if we were to look at the least significant bits, this is as accurate as you can actually get. All right, now I'd like you to take a look at this data. This data seems to be recording a value that is clearly accelerating. If you were to use a least squares linear polynomial to fit this data, you'd get the wrong answers. The least squares best fitting polynomial may look something like this. So uh, consequently, approximating the actual value of the signal at the current time would probably significantly underestimate the actual value. Similarly, using this line to extrapolate into the future would be even more disastrous. Instead, we should be using a least squares best fitting quadratic polynomial. So if this is that polynomial, then this gives us a much better estimate as to what the current value likely is, but it also gives you a much better approximation as to what's going to be occurring one time step into the future. So using a least squares best fitting linear polynomial is not necessarily always the best idea, especially if there are rapid changes in velocity over or changes to the signal in over time. We can also do the same to find a least squares best fitting quadratic polynomial. So we would create the van der Moen matrix that comprises the x values all squared in the first column, followed by just the x values, followed by all ones in the third column. We would then calculate the inverse of A transpose times A, multiply this by the transpose of A, and the product would then be multiplied by the Y values. Let's, however, apply the same trick that we did before. Let's multiply by one. Specifically, let's multiply by the determinant of A transpose times A, over the determinant of A transpose times A. However, we will bring the numerator into the product. So what this gives us here is 
now 1 over 700, the determinant of A transpose times A, times this integer matrix times this vector of Y values. That gives us the three coefficients of our least squares best fitting quadratic polynomial. Now, more simply, we'll notice that the coefficients do simplify somewhat, but they are all rational numbers, which can be calculated almost exactly using floating point approximations. We can now plot this least squares best fitting quadratic polynomial, and this quadratic should be reasonably close to the points we are estimating. Now, as before, our best approximation of the actual current value is not the last reading because it has significant error in it. Instead, our best approximation of the most current value is evaluating this least squares best fitting quadratic polynomial at t equals zero. Now, that is the polynomial evaluated at zero, which is that point on that curve. Well, if t is equal to zero, then the best approximation is just the coefficient a naught, which is the coefficient we see here. We can also use this least squares best fitting quadratic polynomial to estimate the value in the future or around our most recent time period. So for example, we could extrapolate one step into the future by evaluating the least squares quadratic polynomial at t equals one. Well, if t is equal to one, then we just have the sum of a naught plus a one plus a two, which would be the value of the curve at that point. Consequently, the best approximation of the value of the function one time step into the future happens to be this linear combination of the y values. Of course, you could also just calculate it by summing the three coefficients. Also, we can estimate the value at tn plus delta times the time step by evaluating the least squares best fitting quadratic polynomial we found at t equals delta. So that allows us to estimate the value in that interval there. Generally, we should desire to keep delta less than or equal to one. Consequently, when we evaluate the polynomial at delta, we can use Horner's rule, and at each case, delta is a value that is less than or equal to one in absolute value. All right, so we can also extrapolate into the future or evaluate the function around time t sub n by evaluating this interpolating polynomial around zero. Now, some of you keeners may have noticed that solving the system of linear equations ultimately really only required order n time because the matrices were either two by two or three by three. Now, it was a large integer times n, but it was order n, and here we are still calculating the coefficients using a linear combination of n values, which is still order n. So can we get this runtime down to order one, that is with a fixed number of evaluations? Well, there is an interesting pattern that's going along here, and we can exploit this pattern. So notice what happens. This is the val these are the values of a1 and a0 for a least squares best fitting line that passes through the five most recent readings. With the next step, we're going to calculate a new set of coefficients, now using the next point and the four more recent readings.
Now, you may notice that there is a slight relationship between these two. Now, we're not going to derive any sort of theory here, but notice that if I define the sum to be the sum of the four most recent readings, in this case, we can get from the first pair of coefficients to the second pair of coefficients first by updating the coefficient of t by adding to it 0 0.2 times the least recent value minus 0 0.1 times the sum that we just stored plus 0 0.2 times the next reading. We can also update the constant coefficient by adding to the constant coefficient 0 0.2 times the least recent reading minus 0 0.2 times the sum plus 0 0.6 times the next reading. At this point, we simply update the sum by subtracting off what would end up being, well, the third most recent reading plus the new reading. So notice now here we have calculated a1, a0, and the running sum simply by adding a fixed number of values. These three steps can now be performed in order one time. Now, how the sum interacts with the coefficient depends on the number of, of points we're interpolating or finding a least squares best fitting curve through, but you are welcome to investigate this yourself if you want. It's not required. It's just satisfying to know that we can actually continually find least squares best fitting lines in order one time not even order n time. All right, following this topic, you now understand that we can easily find the coefficients of the least squares best fitting polynomials if the t values are equally spaced. And this is something that occurs very often in engineering where we periodically sample a value. You are aware that because the matrices we have defined in the way we defined them, them being integer matrices, it actually is reasonable to calculate the inverse of A transpose times A, all multiplied by A transpose A priori before you implement your software for an embedded system. So you will actually have these coefficients in real time. You understand that this will allow you to very quickly find those coefficients just by calculating a linear combination of a fixed number of y values. You also know that we can use these coefficients of these polynomials to now estimate the value of the signal around the current time t sub n plus or minus one time step. And finally, you are aware that we can even do all of this not in linear time, but in constant runtime, although that is not required for this course. Here are the references, acknowledgements, the colophon, and a disclaimer. Cheers.